I wonder if these are firm ground. Yeah, they definitely are. Why would they write that on the upper? As I'm sure a bunch of you are aware, a little over a month ago, New Balance launched the Furon V6, their latest speed boot that for the first time in a while, I think people are genuinely curious about. Why haven't I reviewed them? Well, New Balance said they were gonna send them to me, but have not done so for whatever reason. But I do have the leather variation. So in today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at what is kind of a bit of an oddball boot, but ultimately one that I think is very good in the form of the leather New Balance Furon V6 Pro. And for those that are wondering, it is kangaroo leather. And again, just to confirm, they are firm ground. Up until this point, I think it's fair to say that the New Balance Furon line has been fairly unextraordinary. It's definitely gotten better over the years, but it's never been a product that I can genuinely recommend over other top end options in the speed boot category. However, the sixth generation of this boot is a complete redesign and honestly has some really interesting elements to it, especially with this 3D textured kangaroo leather upper. Sound familiar? We'll talk about that more in this video. We'll go over all the tech specs, as well as of course, take a look at how the boots fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if you're interested in some of these for yourself, the leather variation as of right now is only available in Europe. Retail is 220 euros. However, if you're purchasing from outside of Europe, you don't have to pay the VAT tax and it ends up being about 185 bucks. Either way, if you're interested in some for yourself, there'll be a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links to pick these up below their normal retail price. So included with the boots is a box. That is all. As to the boots themselves, just so nobody is confused, there are two versions of the new Furon, a synthetic and a leather version, kind of like what Adidas was doing back in the F50 Adi Zero days. The synthetic model features a knitted upper, what New Balance is calling Fit Weave. It's obviously the version you've seen on social media. And according to New Balance, the version that Sadio Mane actually wears for those that are wondering or even care. What I'm holding here is the kangaroo leather version, which based on what I can tell is exactly the same in comparison to that knitted version, but of course, instead of that fit weave, you have kangaroo leather, which of course is marked by this natural leather symbol here on the medial side of the upper. Now the kangaroo leather itself, you'll note, does not have any stitching as kind of a reinforcement element. All of the reinforcement is coming from the internal liner. It's relatively thin, but still has some decent padding to it. And of course has this interesting kind of 3D textured pattern running throughout, which I believe is supposed to mirror or at least look somewhat like the knitted upper on the knitted version of the boot. Personally, I could do without the texturing. It has no impact on feel or touch in any way at all because it's just relatively minimal. It doesn't seem to take away from the soft of the leather or compress it too much. Kind of like the Tiempo Legend 8 with its diamond texturing. This I feel is just less restrictive to the leather itself. It's just something that I think looks a little bit cheap, but that's more of a personal opinion thing. Either way, in terms of leather quality, it's not a perfect 10 out of 10, but it's pretty good in what you would expect from a top end football boot. So no complaints there from me. What I also really appreciate, and we don't always see this with the leather variations of speed boots, is that the entirety of the upper is made out of leather. The leather spans from the heel, basically all the way through on both the lateral and medial side, which means that you get a consistent leather touch across the entire foot, whereas a lot of speed boots simply have leather at the toe and it's kind of a little bit inconsistent in terms of how they feel through the midfoot. As far as the lacing system is concerned, this is what they're calling their fit lock system, which is really not anything new or something that we haven't seen before in that it's a one piece enclosure for your foot. Obviously the central portion of this upper where the leather ends is made out of a stretchy knitted material very similar to fly knit or prime knit or any other knitted material we've seen from any boot brand at this point in time. Very good quality as well, I might add. But you can basically see it's a dual lace hole setup all the way through. Kind of a little bit of an unusual design in that you have this bottom section and they're kind of separated pretty far from here. So you basically have a lace from here to here on the underside, which is just something from a design standpoint that kind of bothers me, but has no impact on feel whatsoever. I don't even know why I'm talking about it, but you will notice that the top two lace holes are simply attached to the leather part of the upper, which is a little bit of an interesting design choice, but does allow for a slightly deeper grab at the top lacing position, which I think just makes for better heel lockdown in general. Moving to the rear, you will find a low cut construction with kind of a mini collar, very similar to what we've seen from plenty of other boots, including something like the Mercurial Vapor 
13 Elite. Sorry, there's so many vapors. I had to think about it for a second. A little bit extended at the back. Kind of like the Nemesis is what I, it reminds me of, the 17 and 18 generation. Personally, I wish it was a little bit lower, but it doesn't seem to be an issue. Internal plastic heel counter, which is pretty straightforward. And then internally, you have this smooth synthetic suede material, plenty of extra padding. And honestly, the heel liner is quite good. The insole is of course fully removable and looks pretty straightforward in that it's a mesh top layer, but it's actually their Infinigrip liner. It also says lightweight as if to imply that they include a comfort set inside of the box. That's not actually the case. Either way, this liner material, it has that mesh sensation, but there's also a very soft almost silicone type grippiness to it. It's very, very subtle, but still feels quite good. and does allow for a little bit of additional grip between your socks and the insole itself. And then the insole is basically just a single layer of this red foam. Pretty straightforward, but decent quality. Which brings us to the base of this boot where, let me just show you. It's a little bit nike -y. Just a little. The sole plate and stud pattern has been completely redesigned from the first five generations of Furon, and I have to say is a gigantic improvement. I would go as far as to say that this is the best sole plate and stud pattern New Balance has ever put out. However, when it comes to the stud pattern, which it is firm ground, by the way, for those that have forgotten, it is very mercurial-esque in terms of these kind of chevron bladed studs that aren't positioned in the exact same spots. In fact, the layout or positioning of the studs is pretty standard, actually very similar to what Adidas does on pretty much every single model. But you can see you have studs angled forward where the arrow is pointing forward for acceleration. Then you have arrows pointing in the opposite direction for the sake of deceleration. The same thing is happening in the heel. It's a very effective layout and a very aggressive stud pattern. Not quite on the same level as the current Mercurials, but it does come very, very close. If you like an aggressive layout, out, this is definitely going to do that for you. And as far as the sole plate is concerned, it has a nylon chassis, which I believe is not the entire material of the sole plate. It's not exactly very clear in the press release in terms of what is happening here, but you can see you have this spine running through the heel and midfoot, which makes for plenty of rigidity through that part. And the overall flexibility through the forefoot is flexible, but it definitely has a little bit of a, a spring back effect to it. So there's definitely some firmness here. Again, kind of what you would expect from a speed boot and just top quality in general. I'm really happy with this sole plate. This could be on an Addy or a Nike boot and I honestly wouldn't have a problem with it. And also on this particular colorway, for those that are wondering, the matte black aspect of the sole plate is a wearable finish, but that has nothing to do with performance. As a whole, I really like this layout. Which brings us to the weight, which I think is a very important part of a speed boot in that if it's not light, it doesn't necessarily feel like a speed boot. And it's something that New Balance has never really gotten right with the Fur Online. With the sixth generation, however, they seem to have solved the issue. This, of course, is a size 9.5 US and is the leather version. I would anticipate the knitted version to be a little bit lighter still. These weigh in at 7.15 ounces, the equivalent of 203 grams, which is significantly lighter than all previous generations of the Furon, if I'm not mistaken, and on par with pretty much all of the main competitors in the speed boot category. On feet, the leather Furons feel really good. The upper is kangaroo leather and feels as you would expect it to. It's soft, it's flexible, it's just the right amount of padding in my opinion to where the boots still have that leather-like sensation, but they also don't feel overly bulky because you still want them to feel relatively thin given that this is after all a speed boot lockdown is really really good in terms of responsiveness there's enough structure to the upper where it doesn't take away from the softness but not so much to where it just doesn't feel like a leather upper anymore so I feel like they got the balance pretty good although it's definitely not the most responsive pair of speed boots that money can buy lockdown through the heel and the overall fit is very very good and the general shape and feel of this boot is completely different in comparison to past Furons I just really like how they feel nothing to complain about there and as far as that sole plate is concerned like I said it does have a little bit of a stiffness to it but in a good way very mercurial esque I guess is the best comparison to make as far as width is concerned these definitely have some decent width to them and because they are leather they're definitely going to stretch as well so as long as you don't have I would say exceptionally wide feet these are going to fit most people very comfortably and as far as sizing is concerned I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US 
and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order some for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, it only took them six tries, but New Balance finally has a speed boot that is legitimately very good. As far as full leather speed boots go, this is one of the better ones that I've tried over the last several years. I think the quality of the kangaroo leather is sufficient for what this boot is trying to do. It doesn't feel overly sloppy. I'm sure that the fit weave variation is probably a little bit more responsive, probably a little bit lighter, and probably more pure speed boot. But if you like that speed boot fit and feel, but still want the softness and comfort of leather, I think you'll really enjoy what these boots have on offer. They fit well, they're lightweight, the sole plate and stud pattern is top notch when it comes to quality as well as overall performance. And honestly, I think the boots are fairly priced. I have to admit, the best comparison to this boot would probably be the Puma King Platinum, and given the choice between those and these, I'd probably go with the Kings, but I could see why a lot of people, mainly people who would want a more aggressive stud pattern, but still a leather upper, would definitely gravitate towards a boot like this, because it really is the only thing like it at this point in time, and legitimately, like I said, a very, very, <laughs> it's a job well done by New Balance. By the way, these are firm ground. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in these for yourself, first link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links to pick these up below the normal retail price. Be sure to go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comment section. If you are not subscribed to the channel already and don't wanna miss out on future content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.